I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 14th of October, 2022. It's Friday, and welcome to my vlog of daily life in Central America. We are still here in the Barrio Escalante, San Jose, Costa Rica, where there's a lot of loud traffic, but hopefully you can hear me just fine. And it is bright and sunny, but we have a bunch of dark clouds in front of me, and we have had intermittent rain this morning, but very, very little. Uh, but it's not too bad. I'm recording actually on Friday because I'm trying to get footage around San Jose for you guys, so I'm trying very hard to record as much as I can while we are here. Tomorrow, we have to leave to head back to Nicaragua very early in the morning. We actually have to get up about 4.30. We have to be at the terminal at 5.30, and Uber here is very unreliable, so we have to allow a lot of time for Uber to be canceling on us, because right now we're probably at about 50-50 uh, for cancellations, and when it really mattered, they all canceled, and when we had lots of time to, to you know, not worry about it, then they were fine. So early in the morning, we have a lot of concerns that people won't be willing to go to the bus terminal because it's an extremely dangerous part of the city. And we can only imagine that that is why people keep canceling on rides down there. If you can see this bright sky behind me, I'm going to turn myself around so you can see the dark sky over here. Today's plan, we are all getting ready right now. We are heading to the Museo de Oro, that's the gold museum, which is the most famous museum in the country. Uh, there are several museums here. This is a museum city. Uh, they have the Jade Museum, they have the National Museum, they have an art museum, all of which are really well known and are supposed to be quite excellent. I'm hoping at some point we can come and do all of those, but Doing a bunch of museums in a single trip is a bit overwhelming, so we're not planning to do that this time. And just the amount of time we, we realistically have one important museum is going to be it and i think the museo de oro is going to be the best one because it has a lot of uh, cultural stuff art stuff history stuff um, the gold artifacts colonial stuff like it's it, it's a pre-columbian museum should be really really interesting uh, and it's a very important museum. It is actually owned by the National Bank, by the Central Bank, uh, and is underneath uh, the plaza, underneath the museum plaza. So that should be really cool that it's basically like a bank vault of gold. Like, how cool is that? Uh, so that is, that is our big thing for today. Uh, the kids like to sleep in, so this morning Dominic and I got up and we went to the Bistro Saul, which is excellent, amazing food. The place looks really cool. We've been seeing it, and I'm like, it looks so cool, we gotta check it out. So we did, and... Uh, this is a, I don't know if this is an office or a house we here, but it's really cool. I'm gonna turn you guys around because this is a street I have not been down yet and it's a really cool residential street. Give you a view of what, I'm not sure this is technically still Escalante or if it's one street east of Escalante, uh, but basically the Escalante area, these are amazing houses on a really cool quiet street. Some of these are definitely businesses. I can see the name on the wall. So we did that, um, had an had absolutely incredible breakfast, uh, some, some coffee, charged our phones there. We were like the only people there this morning. I mean, it's a Friday morning. You'd think people would be out at the cafes. No idea why. One thing we love about Costa Rica compared to Nicaragua, there's a lot of cafe culture. Uh, so tons of really good coffee shops just everywhere. That's awesome. So that's something we, we certainly miss uh, from Europe um, or anywhere else in Latin America. It's really surprising how little of a cafe culture that Nicaragua has, especially considering it is a coffee country. Buenos dias. And uh, <laughs> this dog is so cute. And uh, uh, so we're, we're really enjoying that while we're here. By the way, I want to point out this blue car right here. My father will be especially impressed. This is an MG. This is one of the countries here where MGs are sold. You can actually get them new at dealerships and uh, very cool. That's something that I wish we could get. We had to get a Toyota. We can have MGs in Nicaragua, but they don't sell them. Uh, I know I've seen them for sale in Panama and similar brands like Renault are for sale in Guatemala. So there's actually a really cool collection of available European cars that the United States is unable to get available in this region uh, but they're still pretty rare but actually just as rare as American cars things like Chevy and Ford just really not seen down here lots of great street art in Costa Rica and this thing I can't tell if this is an expensive house that people are living in or if it's abandoned. It's very hard to tell. <laughs> it's got a look that could go either way um, but what a neat area and then fields uh, there is. We're very close to an open area because of a river coming through. Uh, so that may be this, or actually this looks like a park, but it may be up against the river. Notice I'm going to look at all the artwork on the buildings. This is not like 
inner city graffiti. This is like really nice stuff. Actually, let's go over and check this out. What do we got? And there are people in the park. Always nice. Oh, this is nice. Cool. I had no idea we were going to find this. This is perfect. Currently waiting for Liesl to get ready. Got the sound of running water here. I can't see where it's coming from. There's a lot of water down there. Awesome. This is a great park. Costa Rica is known for its parks. So right now the kids are getting ready and uh, what is this? And as soon as they are set, we are heading out to a creperie because Luchana is requesting waffles this morning. Yeah, all this art all along this building. This is great, really good color. And uh, we're gonna do that and then off to the museum. I'm not taking the GoPro with me to the museum this morning. Uh, we've heard that, the, I mean, first of all, it's a museum. What am I gonna do, walk around with a GoPro? It would be nice to get some footage for you guys, but uh, it's a little bit awkward being in a museum with a GoPro and uh, it's very hard to get anything because it's dark and it's kind of interrupting to other people potentially. It's just awkward. Um, but we've heard that there's very high security at the gold museum because it's a gold museum. And so uh, you can't bring very much in. So I'm going to bring the iPhone with me, but that is all that I'm going to have. And this park continues across the street. I'm just going a little ways. Just want to see what this is about. This is a nice little park. I have to say, a couple days here, and we are very impressed with San Jose. It is much warmer this morning than it has been. I don't know the temperature, but I bet uh, it's two or three degrees warmer than we have seen since we've been here. The sun is definitely intense. And uh, I think we're gonna go up here and see where it goes. Yeah, so uh, going to do breakfast with the kids. Um, and uh, while we're doing that, I will leave the GoPro uploading because it is a huge, huge struggle to upload. I did some measurements yesterday and had a conversation with the owner of the hotel. And uh, definitely, of course, they don't believe it. No one believes that Nicaragua has better internet even when their own speeds are horrible. Uh, but I talked to him about it here, about how slow the internet is and how impactful it is that, that you know, we really notice the moment you try to do anything. Sure, if you're just trying to watch Netflix and no one else needs to use the internet, you're fine. But the moment anyone else needs to use it, you notice that it is asynchronous everywhere here in Costa Rica. In Nicaragua, nearly everything is synchronous, meaning the same speed up as down. So when we say it's fast, we always talk about the up speed. Everyone's fast on download, but some places are fast on upload, and that's what really matters. These are some beautiful houses here in the park. I don't know if you can see them. I'm gonna stop for a second so it makes it easier to upload. We'll be right back in just a second here from this gorgeous park here in San Jose. Also a great excuse for me to catch my breath a little bit as we continue on because when I walk and talk this much, it is hard to stay <laughs> with enough air to keep talking. Ooh, we're getting a little bit of shade now. It's getting comfortable. This is a, I, I like this park. I can't figure out like what it's supposed to be. Just kind of a little green connector between neighborhoods, but it's quite nice, quite nice. Living along this would be an excellent spot in the city. These really are great urban environments. That's Costa Rica seems to have a pretty good urban design going on with its one big city. So um, when, you, when you're worrying about internet, uh, most people at home think about, well, we got to have Netflix, what's our download? And they only want one number because they want life to be simple, but the, the world doesn't work that way. And I've talked about this before, but here you really notice that in Nicaragua, typical speeds are for really, really slow internet or 10 by 10 for fast or 50 by 50. And you can get pretty much anything you want. Uh, but, oh, look at this puppy. One of these. Hello, little puppy. Hi. Oh, you're famous now. <laughs> and, uh, oh, more street art along these buildings. And uh, so we worry about um, download speed is what we talk about because it's easy, but upload speed typically is what affects us more. And here, uh, apparently it's really easy to get these really big speeds. They do the same thing in, that they do in the US, which is this kind of fake advertising. They give one number with the uh, speeds and say, oh, you're getting 200 mega. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. 
they say like you're getting 200 megs or something like that and it sounds great but what they're actually giving you is 200 by 10 or something like that and all over the u.s this is how it works and i have business customers all over the u.s and this is a constant struggle that they can't get faster than 10 or maybe 20 megabits per second upload and upload is what really matters everybody has fast download and typically you don't download actually all that much you feel like you do because of things like netflix or youtube but those tend to be a steady stream of a moderate amount so you actually don't need as much as anyone tells you but what you do need is fast upload for a number of things especially if you have content creators but you have to have enough speed in both directions for things to work you can't have only one so in nicaragua our fast locations are typically 50 by 50. here what they consider fast is like 150 or 200 by 10. that feels fast as long as the only thing you're doing is surfing the web and downloading videos, which a lot of people do and that works fine. But in a hotel setting or a business setting or a content creator setting, like me at home, I need to be able to upload videos for you guys. Well, when you have a connection speed of only eight megabits upload, it only takes plugging in the GoPro. It doesn't take me doing anything. No editing, no work, no anything. All I do is plug in the GoPro and it shuts down the hotel internet download and upload for the day right because you have to have both upload and download and their upload is so slow this appears to be a really cool condo or apartment building it says for sale or rent so it must be condo and it takes an entire 24 hours at the incredibly slow speed that we have to upload the little bit of videos that i am doing here and during that time, we figured out it completely shuts down the hotel internet. So even though we're not downloading, oh, this is, I hope you can see how cute this is. And there's a little cat looking at me. He's like, what are you doing? Why are you filming the cat? All it takes is saturating the upload to get one file sent up or one GoPro load setup that a GoPro does automatically and iPhones do automatically with their iCloud backup. Everything does automatically these days. If you do that, you can't get the data out in order to do the data downloads. So I measured the download speed when the GoPro was plugged in in the hotel last night, and it was getting 0.1 megabit, zero upload. 0.1 download, zero upload, ping time of over 128. So slow. And if you were in a hotel in Nicaragua, it would upload much faster and not be saturated, and the download would still work fine the gap in performance between Nicaragua and Costa Rican internet is crazy. Now I realize that's just one hotel, but I talked to the hotel owner and he said, get the same speed up and down. That's not a real thing. You can't do that. He, it's so rare in Costa Rica. He actually thought it was a physical limitation of internet that it couldn't be done instead of just, they get crappy internet in this part of the world. That's how big the gap is in the Nicaragua to Costa Rica performance. In Nicaragua, even people who are getting super cheap internet in Managua for home, the, the really, really poor internet that's like $35 a month is synchronous 10 by 10, and it only takes like 40 or $45 before you're at 20 by 20 or something that would dramatically outperform the expensive, quote unquote, super fast internet here in Costa Rica. So while it's fast enough to work, it is what I'm being told is that it's actually difficult to get enough bandwidth for a single content creator to work on their videos anywhere here in the country. I'm sure there's ways to get it. Businesses must have access to that stuff, but it must be that the cost is just astronomic that people don't understand that it exists at a consumer level or even at a small business level. That's crazy. Now in the US, it's the same thing. So it's not completely surprising because in the US, I have customers, like I said, all over the country, and over half of them do not have access to synchronous internet or high speeds. Um, and, and many of them have issues with reliability. And that we've had here as well. The internet has been out many times uh, while we've been here. So it's noticeable that we've had more outages in four days in Costa Rica than we have in a year in Nicaragua. And it's not been like during a storm or anything, it's just just everyday uh, normal weather, normal use. It apparently just goes up and down a little bit. Not a ton, it hasn't been bad, I'm not complaining. It's just really amazing coming to a place that is so much richer and that everyone is so 
sure must be so much better than Nicaragua. And it's got a lot of great things going for it. I'm really liking Costa Rica. I'm really liking San Jose. Really loving this neighborhood. This Escalante is fantastic. I found out that Time Out Magazine ranks it the 41st best neighborhood on the planet to live in. Uh, and I can really see why. I think that that's potentially legit. Um, but it doesn't have the technical infrastructure of rural Nicaragua. And that's something people just have such a hard time internalizing and cannot accept. And it's, it's not just a little bit, it's a lot. The gap is big. So that's, that's really interesting, just how different that is um, and how hard it is uh, to work on the videos here. If I had to be based here, it would cause real problems to my workflow that I would have a, a struggle to get things uploaded and downloaded. I'd have to have really, really, really extreme internet packages, probably multiple internet packages. Um, and and the, the, the speeds that they get here on fiber are slower than the speeds we get in Nicaragua on our cell phones. That's, that's how big it is, right? We get over 100 meg upload up there uh, when it's really good, and here the really good is 10, right? So it's so different, um, and, and that's, kind of, that's kind of a gauge we use for is it a technical country or a non-technical country? In a technical country, you can't get people with, you know, only giving them one speed. People understand they need both for things to work, like, and they know that you can deliver it. And in a less technical country, it's really easy to, to just simplify things and give the public one number and they'll just accept it. It's just marketing and marketing drives everything. And uh, the U.S. really, really does, partially because it's so big, you just blast out lots of advertising and no one ever questions, is this how the internet works? Lots of consumers make it uh, easy to manipulate the public with marketing and that's what they're doing, right? Just if you get every company together and ignore that there's multiple numbers, but in Nicaragua, you notice they list the, the speeds with the double numbers the way you're supposed to, the way that IT people do, right? And that's all you have to do. If you have IT people that are writing the real speeds, this number by this number with this ping, you can't, you can't fake it, right? This is the actual speed. This is what you need to know. And people will be like, oh, as long as it's reliable, now I know what it does. But if you only give one number, people are in the dark. You really don't know what you're capable of doing with that. You know, you don't even know if it works and uh, uh, that people, that nobody is calling that out really causes problems, right? You need people to say, look, this isn't a legit way. Like, how fast is it? I don't know. You have to say, I don't know. You can't say it's 200. 200 what? That doesn't make any sense. So that's something that I got an ambulance here. That was a little bit loud. So. Uh, it's just it's just really shocking to me. I was thinking, oh, it's gonna be really great internet here too. And it's not bad, but it's like US internet, not like I was hoping for, right? Guatemala was, was closer to, to Nicaragua internet. Still not as fast, but much better. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap up here. I'm gonna go start the uploads because it takes all day. Let that upload while we're at the Museo de Oro and uh, hopefully get a little bit of footage for you guys while we're out. And uh, I'll see you all hopefully later this afternoon once we're back from that and have some more stuff to do. But it's been a lot of fun here. This is our last day. So I'm hoping to, to get some stuff in and be able to show you a little bit more of the city. We've gotten a bit, but uh, it's, a, it's a big city with a lot to show. So I'll see you all in a little bit. Lots of changes of plans today. So first of all, it's raining a lot, like not like a huge storm. It did earlier, but right now it's just a good solid rain, but it's about four o'clock in the afternoon and there's a lot of rain. So I'm not able to take the GoPro out and film like I wanted to on the streets. So we're missing a lot of footage that I really wanted to get. And my whole afternoon was set aside for this after the museums and we're not, I don't think I'm gonna get anything on the streets before it's dark. It's too much rain. I can't take the GoPro out in this much rain because I've got the media kit housing. So I'm sorry, but it's not waterproof. And this, this would be a lot. Um, but we went out since I last videoed, the girls wanted to get lunch. We went to Entre Nous, which is a creperie, creperie in um, here in Barrio Escalante. They were excellent, really good. The girls actually got waffles that were fantastic. Tons of Nutella, bananas, ice cream, really good, fresh made whipped cream. It was excellent. Dominica got tomato and basil soup in a bread bowl. That was fantastic. They have a gorgeous garden. Everything's really well done there. A little bit eclectic, not as eclectic as Saul, where we went for breakfast this morning. Very, very eclectic and delicious food, really good. I just got coffee because I knew there's gonna be leftovers and just eating leftovers from the girls, I was too much, right? I did not need that much food. Um, well, we did that and we stayed there for a little while because while we were there, we went from a little bit 
cloudy, which you saw in my earlier videos, to total downpour. They were flooding in there. It was, it was a lot, which it was nice. It was nice sitting inside, stayed dry, watched the storm. Uh, once it let up a little bit, Uber came and got us and we went downtown to go to the uh, Gold Museum, Museo de Oro, uh, right downtown in the middle of the Plaza de Museo. And uh, we got there. By the time we got down there, it was absolutely torrential rain again. We jumped out of the car. We had to run all the way through the plaza, which is completely exposed. We were not expecting that. We were not planning on it. And uh, so we were absolutely drenched. Just that little bit across the plaza, we might as well have gone in a swimming pool for real. Like there was nothing dry at all. Got to the door, there's no overhang, and it's just a metal mesh. And we're like, where's the entrance? And they're like, oh, we're closed. We're like, what? It's Friday afternoon at one o'clock. Why are you closed? We were there yesterday at like four o'clock and they were closed, but we thought they were closed because they closed at 4.30 so they wouldn't be letting people in at four. Like that makes sense. So we didn't think anything of it that they were closed yesterday, but they are actually been closed for like the whole time we've been here and we didn't know. So we weren't able to go to any museums because they were all closed. That was really disappointing because that was the one big thing that I wanted to do. The girls are not that disappointed because they didn't really want to go. They were willing to go, but they weren't like really looking into it. But uh, I really was looking forward to it and I think they would have enjoyed it. So that did not work out great uh, for my planning. So I'm very sad about that. So we went and there was a Punto Favorito. It's a, it's a department store. Well, mostly a women's clothing store right there across from the Museo de Oro. So Dominica's like, let's go in there. So we just ran in. She actually did some shopping. Elisa was like, oh, she just found some things she wanted. So they ended up buying some things while we were there for probably close to an hour. Uh, and then when we went to leave, the kids were like, we want to go back to the hostel. And uh, Dominica's like, oh, I kind of wanted to shop. We're like, we'll go back to the hostel. You shop like no problem. So she stayed downtown uh, for the rest of the afternoon and went shopping. We came back by Uber to the hostel to here at the chill out uh, in Barrio Escalante. And uh, I set up my laptop. I'm going to show you where I've been working. This is my work setup right here. There's basically no one's been using this space. So the first night we got here, someone was in here for a little bit. That's it. I've basically had this space to myself. I can plug in down below or sometimes I work on the chairs over here and I can plug in over there as well. I don't know if you can see the plugs there, but this is a great little space and there's a there's a roof. So it, even though it's open air over here, I'm getting fresh air. I can hear the rain. I get the rain on the plastic. It's really pleasant. Uh, so it's really nice to sit out here and I'll show it's just a stone floor. So I'm I'm kind of outside at the back of the hostel. The girls are right around the corner. So if they need me, they can just come down the hallway uh, and get me. Um, so I'm all plugged in, charging everything here, like just making life pretty easy. Um, and uh, so I stayed here and did work work did some shorts uploads because I did get some stuff on uh, the iPhone because I had that with me today. I did not take the GoPro because of the rain. But the whole time we've been back here, I've been just waiting to go out and film for you guys and the storm has never let up. So that's been our afternoon. The girls are just drawing in the room and relaxing. They want me to go to the fresh market and pick up more of the Dos Pinos salmon dip that they absolutely love. And uh, at this point, it's four o'clock and Dominica just messaged me while I was recording this, said it's cold and rainy and she wants to come back, but Uber's really expensive. So she's just waiting on them, but she's coming back soon. And uh, uh, then at some point I plan to get the dip and then we're going to go out for uh, dinner. We think at an Asian restaurant that Paul recommended, but we'll see how everyone feels and how the Uber situation is and all that. We got to get to bed early tonight because we got to be up at about 430 in the morning, which I said. So our evening is going to be pretty short. And this is me probably Unfortunately, I had to uh, re-record this at the end because uh, the GoPro crashed again, but I kept recording on the screen. Everything looked like it was fine. And when I went to stop the recording, it completely freaked out and then some of the recording wasn't there. So we're starting to have some significant issues with this GoPro 9. Again, I've had it for years. I use it for hours every day. It gets a lot of abuse. It's not a huge issue that it is wearing out, but I need to make it until December until I can get the GoPro 11 in my hands uh, and be ready with something new for you guys. It seems to be worse when we use the media kit, but I have to use the media kit to have the microphone. Uh, and so, and then Part of the design flaw with the GoPro is that you have to take the media, first of all, you have to take the GoPro off of any um, uh, tripod or, or handle or anything that you're using in order to get the media kit off. So that's not easy. You have to get a screw that's very, bolt that's very, very tight, very hard to reach, get that off. Then you have to fold in the legs, the fingers they call them, take the media kit off, 
then you can pull the battery out and that's often the only way you can get uh, to stop the GoPro once something has gone wrong. So there's a major flaw in the design that it's when using it in a way that people use it pretty heavily, uh, there's no way to deal with it crashing, which it does a lot. And so the ability to, to yank the battery needs to be something and to replace the battery, right? If you're doing anything where you've got to do battery swaps, it's very difficult to do. I know the GoPro 10 and 11 don't address any of that in any way. Um, hopefully they're just more stable, but I'm really hoping with the GoPro 12 and forward that they come up with some way to address some of that stuff that the media kit doesn't make the, the system uh, inaccessible in such a dramatic way. And really the only thing I need from the media kit most times is a way to plug in a microphone. Yes, the built-on microphone is awfully nice. The extra uh, cold shoes are nice, but the big thing is just being able to plug something in. Seems like you could do that without the media kit, but I know waterproofing, it makes it difficult. But please remember to like and subscribe, leave your comments below, uh, share on social media. If you'd like to support us directly, you can do so with the link to buy me a coffee below in the comments. And I will see all of you from a long bus ride back to Leon, Nicaragua tomorrow.